Hurricane Aaron is about to become a Category 4 hurricane in the Atlantic Ocean and is rapidly intensifying as we speak as it continues to track in the direction of the Western Atlantic Ocean. This is likely going to bring some impacts to areas like the United States, the Lesser Antilles, Puerto Rico, and Bermuda. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about Hurricane Aaron and why this is going to be one of the most intense hurricanes that we've seen over the last couple of years. We're going to begin with what's happening right now in the Atlantic Ocean, and this right here is Hurricane Aaron. It is located only about 150 miles to the north right now of the Leeward Islands. It is currently tracking to the west. It should stay at least far enough away from Puerto Rico and the Lesser Antilles, where it's only going to bring tropical storm impacts, but this thing is cranking as a hurricane right now. It has been rapidly intensifying over the last 12 hours. It actually dropped four millibars of pressure in a singular hour, which is really crazy stuff, and this is about to become a Category 4 hurricane, most likely by tomorrow, as it continues to track in the direction of the Bahamas. Now, as we go into early next week, we are expecting that this will still stay out to sea, but there will be some impacts to the East Coast and even areas like Bermuda. Now, this is what it looks like across the entire Atlantic Ocean right now. This right here is Hurricane Aaron. It's about 150 to 200 miles to the north right now of the Leeward Islands. And then this right here is a little bit of a surprise, but we do have a very low chance of tropical development over the next couple of days just off the coast of North Carolina. I really don't think anything forms here, but we are currently watching for at least some heavy rain showers back over near Cape Hatteras, which is also an area that I do think we are going to see an elevated risk for rip currents, high waves, and maybe even getting clipped by Hurricane Aaron over the next several days. Now, this is the forecast on Hurricane Aaron over the next several days. Beginning with what's happening today into tonight, it is expected to become a Category 4 hurricane as early as later this afternoon. That is how fast Hurricane Aaron is currently intensifying. As we go into tomorrow, this is going to get awfully close to Category 5 intensity. The current forecast from the National Hurricane Center has as this at least getting up to maximum sustained winds of 145 to 150 miles per hour as we go into Sunday morning. So this is within the next 24 hours. This will be at its peak intensity. Also, the maximum wind gusts as high as 175 miles per hour. Now, the good news is that this is not going to be close enough to land to actually bring those types of impacts. But the one thing that this will do over time is that it's going to continue to elevate our wave heights, which will also impact the rip currents, especially over the work week along the east coast of the United States. And we could have up upwards of 100 foot waves well offshore over here in the western Atlantic Ocean from this hurricane. It is expected to begin to weaken as we go into Monday as it continues to move to the north and then from there it should stay far enough to the east of the Bahamas to not bring anything more than tropical storm impacts. We'll also be watching areas like Bermuda for at least some moderate to potentially major impacts as well and then from there the cone of uncertainty continues to grow. There is a chance it could get kind of close to the United States but it should still stay far enough away from North Carolina to the point where the impacts will not be major, but there will at least still be some minor to moderate impacts when it comes to higher wave heights and as well as the potential for uh, rip currents. So definitely make sure if you're anywhere along the East Coast this week, you are watching the flags at the beach because those are going to give you an idea of how significant the rip currents are going to be, which I think almost all week long, they are going to be very significant and potentially very dangerous. Now let's talk more about the timing of Hurricane Aaron. This is what it looks like by tonight. It'll be sitting just off to the north of Puerto Rico. As we go into tomorrow, the Icon model does have this getting down to a sub 940 low pressure system. This is a little bit of an outlier, but it obviously does make a run at category five intensity as it approaches the uh, far eastern areas there, just east of the Bahamas. And then as we go into late Monday into Tuesday, this model does not take it super far from Florida. I do think it'll be further to the east than what this model shows, but nonetheless, this basically gives you an idea of what the worst case scenario would look like as we go into this week. So this is Tuesday night, a very strong hurricane, most likely just off to the southwest of Bermuda. By Wednesday, this will be going off to the north and another thing I want to point out here is I still think this is a little too far to the west I do think the low pressure system will be a little bit further out here to the east so somewhere just to the west of Bermuda there will still be impacts especially to areas like North Carolina on Wednesday near Cape Hatteras I think the biggest concerns will be rip currents and also higher wave heights I would say that there is at least a low chance of tropical storm force winds and maybe even a possibility for some minor storm surge but I don't think there's gonna be anything too crazy but definitely something to still watch for on Wednesday by Thursday this will continue to move to the northeast and it will eventually be out to sea and then we're going to be done talking about Hurricane Aaron as we go into next weekend but obviously this is still something that is a concern and very very well may bring some impacts to Bermuda as well as the east coast here over the next several days and as I mentioned a few minutes ago make sure if you're anywhere near the beaches over the next several days that you are watching for rip currents they are very dangerous and they can definitely be deadly especially with hurricanes of this intensity and before we go further into today's forecast we need to talk more about the sponsor of today's video 
Another forecast that may not be fun to look at is the forecast of growing debt, and that's why today's sponsor, PDS Debt, is here to help. Whether you are dealing with credit card debt, loans, or even high interest traps, PDS Debt is here to help. PDS Debt goes beyond the numbers to help understand your unique financial situation and craft a personalized plan just for you. And the best part is, is that there is no minimum credit score required. They're here to help you save more, pay off your debt faster, and start putting money back where it belongs, which is in your pocket. If I had to use a service like this, PDS Debt would be my option of choice. PDS Debt is rated a by the Better Business Bureau and has thousands of five-star reviews. You are 30 seconds away from being debt-free. Get your free assessment now and choose the best option for you at pdsdebt.com slash velocity. That's pdsdebt.com slash velocity. pdsdebt.com slash velocity. Now let's get back to the forecast. Now that we're back in the forecast, this is a look at the ensemble members displaying where Hurricane Aaron will likely go. And notice that there are very few models that bring this within even 100 miles of the East Coast. There's one singular outlier that does bring this just off the coast there of North Carolina. This obviously would be a bad scenario, but the majority of the ensemble members at least keep this a safe distance away from North Carolina to avoid anything like hurricane impacts. I do not forecast any hurricane impacts for right now anywhere along the East Coast of the United States. Now, one other thing I want to point Point out is that behind Hurricane Aaron, there will be another tropical wave that'll be coming off the coast of Africa over the next few days. And there are some ensemble members that do bring this in the direction of the Caribbean. But keep in mind, obviously, that this is still very far out and the spread is massive. I mean, it literally goes from the southwestern part of the Caribbean Sea all the way back over towards the central Atlantic Ocean. So there's a lot of time between now and then for our next tropical wave. But I do really think uh, either one or the next two tropical waves are going to go into the Caribbean Sea or just kind of skim a Along the greater Antilles, which could obviously lead to impacts in the United States in the long term. So that'll be something to watch for. But for now, no concerns for the United States for a landfalling hurricane. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days, beginning with what's happening today. We have a slight risk of severe weather in place back over in South Dakota and a marginal threat of severe weather, which does include areas like Wisconsin, Michigan, all the way back into Chicago and also all the way back through North Dakota. Around 38 million people are in this risk of severe weather today. The biggest concern Concern will be damaging winds and large hail, but notice there is actually a 2% tornado risk in place, which does include areas like Minnesota, Wisconsin, Northern Illinois, and Northeastern Iowa. So stay weather aware, have ways to receive warnings, and there is a chance of a live stream today, so make sure you click the bell icon so you're notified if we do go live, but definitely stay weather aware. I definitely could see there being a tornado or two today with the environment that we have in place. And then tomorrow, the threat of severe weather continues from the Northern Plains all the way back into the Ohio Valley, approximately 27 and a half million people are in the risk of severe weather tomorrow. Biggest concern will be damaging winds and some isolated large hail. There's a very low chance of an isolated tornado somewhere in this risk, but I think generally speaking, our tornado threat will be lower. Now, here's the timing of severe weather beginning with today across the Midwest. There will likely be a remnant line of storms going through Minnesota and Wisconsin this morning. By around 11 o'clock, this will be pushing right through Wausau, and then eventually by noon to one in the afternoon, this will be pushing down towards Milwaukee and southern Wisconsin, where damaging winds will continue continue and then behind that by around three o'clock or so I think we're going to start to see an increasing tornado threat it is a low chance it is conditional but this is a highly populated area so we definitely need to keep a very close eye on this threat that could be growing sometime around three four five o'clock just outside of Chicago so this is right here pictured four o'clock central time we're gonna be watching areas in southwestern Wisconsin and northwest Illinois for a potential for an isolated tornado or two and then by six to seven o'clock this threat will start to die down so I think the overall threat will be mainly during the mid to late afternoon afternoon it should be really winding down after seven o'clock or so and then as we go into the late evening and overnight hours there will be a growing concern of flooding as we could see some training showers and thunderstorms from southern wisconsin all the way back up towards minneapolis and even back over towards gary south dakota so that'll be something else to watch for definitely be prepared to turn around and don't drown on the roadways as flooding has been a big problem already over the last couple weeks back over in southern wisconsin and while all that's happening in the midwest we are expecting a threat of isolated severe weather to develop late this afternoon into the evening hours, mainly back over in Nebraska and South Dakota. Be ready for isolated hail and wind, very low tornado risk. And then as we go into Sunday, it looks pretty messy once again, just some isolated showers and thunderstorms that'll produce the potential for some hail, wind, and maybe a brief tornado. And while all this is happening, we are anticipating a heat dome to continue to build over the next seven days, especially across the Ohio Valley, Midwest, and the Southeast. So get ready for some much warmer weather. We already have heat indices in areas like Florida in the 110 
tens. Very little wind as well, and that's really not going anywhere anytime soon. By next weekend, that heat is going to continue for most areas east of the Rockies. There could be a brief cool down, though, if you're in the Midwest and the Northern Plains. And then beyond that, things become a lot more uncertain as we go into September, but I would definitely expect that the heat is really not going anywhere anytime soon. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. There is a chance of a live stream later today, so click the bell icon so you're notified if we do go live. Also, huge shout out to PDS Debt for sponsoring today's forecast. You can check them out with the top link in the description below. And we'll see you guys all again in the next video, which should be tomorrow, but if not, it'll be on Monday.